if somebody doesn't pay on a first date, if a guy doesn't pay on a first date, I think a lot of women don't feel safe. It, it feels like an insult almost that the person doesn't pay. Yeah, obviously, but which one is it? Insult or safety? There is quite a jump between one and the other, isn't it? I don't even want to know what you think on you asking for money and me saying no. <laughs> And now for some context, because I believe it's needed. This lunatic was pretending she was putting on her face $758. Every single time she's putting on makeup because she's such a princess. And this guy right here, he was doing the exact math. And it's obviously not $758, it's $6.50. A Big Mac where he lives is $12. So for the lunatic pretending she spends $750 every time she's putting on makeup, every time a guy is taking you for a burger, you owe him $6. Men should always pay on the first date, and this is why. Girl, tell us why. There's about to be two grand on my face. Two grand? Girl, what the hell are you putting on your goddamn face? Starting with Dior Moisturizer, $135. Dior Capture of Use Serum, $125. Dior Primer, $50. Armani Primer, $46. Flawless Filter, $49. Chanel Liquid Highlighting Drops, $57. Dior Foundation, $57. Dior Concealer, $40. Chanel Bronzer, $60. Chanel Multi Use Stick, $50. Chanel Blush Stick, $54. Moisel Highlighter, $27. Chanel Powder, $56. Dior Bronzer, $50. Dior Highlight, $50. Dior Backstage, $48. These Dior Blushes, $80 total. Dior Backstage, $52. The Shadow, $68. Dior Eyeliner, $35. $68. Bamboo Stone, $24. Eyeliner, $35. Eyelash curler, $35. Dior mascara, $33. White cell mascara, $35. Roll lip liner, $24. Charlotte Tilbury liner, $25. Chanel lip duo, $48. Chanel lip gloss, $40. Kirby Decay setting spray, $36. Total cost is $1,745. Well, goddamn, you gotta put all that on your face? You a whole little filter. If you're a girl, make sure the man pays. She can't be serious, right? Don't waste two grand on nothing. Oh, he needs to pay because you put 2K on your face. But who gonna pay the $800 car note and the $500 insurance on the car that he used to come get you. The $100 that he put in that gas tank to come get you. The outfit he bought to go on a date with you, that's probably like $200. The cologne that he sprayed on him, that's probably like $100 or more. The haircut he went and got, that's like $50. At this point, girl, you probably owe him. And that's why I always say, head right there in the restaurant under the table. You know, just to make it even. Because if he's taking you to a hotel later, do you have any idea how much it costs to build a hotel? Not just one room, but the entire building. All jokes aside, we've seen it from the previous video, it doesn't cost that much to put makeup on your face. You may spend $2,000 on makeup, but that will last you for months. You will not be spending $2,000 just so you can make a stupid TikTok. Oh, and by the way, even without spending that much money on a stupid tiktok you're a liability to every man that would be interested in you you don't even make the type of money you say you're spending on makeup because let's face it you're a tiktoker and you expect a man to pay for being interested in you just because you put on makeup on your face like i said you're a liability creating your reality doesn't have to be serious it doesn't have to be confusing and hard and that's the problem with this lunatic and the two we've seen earlier they don't live in reality they create their own the only thing I like in Miami is how much hotter you can get because everyone here is hot and so you're just bound to get hot and these are some of the things that I wish someone told me when I moved here that I should do ASAP. Um, I just find this for fun. It's not like I hate myself. I just genuinely think it's, it's girly and fun to get hot and pamper yourself. I would invest in my skincare. That would be my first thing is skincare. Then second of all, I would go to like uh, an esthetician or like a filler place and just have them balance out my face and they're probably gonna tell you you have a hella wrinkles too and then you just get like baby talk I don't know what that is but you do look shiny and I don't like how much filler you got into your lips you can't even move your mouth you wish someone told you to do that sooner to what destroy your face if that's the case maybe you should have never went to Miami you look a certain way but hot n not really mommy can boys be doctors too that's what my four-year-old daughter just asked me. Can boys grow up to be doctors too? We're doing something right.
And what would that be exactly? Patriarchy? Oh, no, 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 that's not it. Equality? No, that's not it either. What exactly is it you're doing right if your four years old daughter asked you nothing? Because that's a lie. But let's say she did. Where exactly did she hear that boys can't be doctors? At four years old, <laughs> I'm guessing from you. But regardless if she did ask you or not, you need to make up your mind. Do we all live under patriarchy and men are holding you back or do we live under something where men can't be doctors? I would also be curious and a little bit afraid to find out what your answer was. One time I went on a date with a gym bro. <laughs> First of all, gym bros have like a weird obsession with curvy girls and I think it's a deep-rooted insecurity, but that's a discussion topic for another time. I went on this date. Oh, first of all, I'm sitting here eating a Caesar salad and french fries. <laughs> That's what sparked my mind about this story. Yeah, cool story. I get it that 10 years ago you learned a new word, insecure. But it's probably time to stop using it because not everything in life is about insecurities. Gym bros don't like that type of curvy. Some do and that's only because preferences, not insecurities. And that goes just about any other men, not just gym bros. Some like it curvy, some don't. It used to be that the ones who don't were insecure, now it's the gym bros who do. How I taught Western boys to always treat me like a princess as an Eastern European. You're no longer Eastern European. Stop it. You're all westernized to your core. Stop it. But I've seen a lot of situations where my friends would be start dating a guy and he's literally not giving them the treatment that they deserve. They would never drop them home. They would ask them to contribute to the day. They would cancel last minute. They will tell them that they're not bothered or they're busy with their work, their co-curricular, whatever. But then I see my Eastern European friends who would never get them, would never allow the man to treat them like that, and this is how. So when you start dating a man or texting him, you set your standard and your expectation, and you communicate that subtly to them. This, I mean, your energy needs to match your standards, and the way you kind of portray yourself and perceive yourself needs to always match the standard that you have. For example, I always make it clear with the way I sort of look and the vibe I give off that I'm not contributing to the bill on first dates. Like I've said, westernized to your core. Deserve princess, treatment, vibes, energy. Everything about you screams, well, single, but I mean westernized. You don't get the princess treatment because he's busy at work. You're not really used to thinking too often, are you? Yeah, where are all the men, like the good, <laughs> real men at? Ladies, listen closely because I'm about to tell you exactly where all the good men went. Are you ready? You ready? Here it comes. They left you alone like you f asked. Leave women alone. I honestly just want our guys to just leave me alone. Leave women alone. The only reason you could be excused for not understanding where the good men went is because of the fact that you don't often hear what every man hears on a daily basis, on every platform, in public, wherever he goes. But the thing is, that's just pure ignorance because it's not like it's out there. You could easily find it or Get this, you could listen to one of us MRAs who are telling you that it's happening, and then maybe you'd start to understand. The good men saw every single one of you posting a ridiculous laundry list of what is considered to be the bare minimum, while they only ask for a few very simple things. Someone who loves them, someone who cares about them, and somebody who will bring them peace. That's all we ask, and when we realise that we're not even going to get that after we have spent most of our lives dedicating ourselves to this ridiculous laundry list that you've got, we still end up getting divorced or left. I'm not even going to cover what happens when a guy's left or divorced because the laundry list of shit that he has to go through when that happens is just too big for one video. We're avoiding you because A, your standards are damn near perfection and B, we suffer consequences for even trying to be in a relationship with you, let alone the consequences that come after having a relationship with you. Do the men understand that the more they throw a tantrum over 4B, the more women are going to participate in 4B? Literally whether they know about the movement or not. You are also not used to thinking too often, are you? That's why whenever you have your monthly idea, you think, oh, I am onto something here. I throw a tantrum about something I don't even know it exists. How exactly am I doing that, you fruitcake? Anyway, I'm done for today. I'm trying different settings, so let me know if the sound was okay. But for now, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.